Hi, this is Garrett Goggle, Gold Stock Analyst. Today we have Daryl Rader, CEO of Menorum Gold, joining us. Hey, Daryl, thanks for joining us. Hi, Garrett, thanks for having me. Uh, you're very welcome, and I'm glad we we're able to catch up. Um, the your company, Menorum, right? Was um, it was supposed to be the um, gold-focused mag silver? Would you is that cl characteristic clear? Yeah, um, we had a number of the same founders as Mag Silver, um, which included most notably Dr. Peter McGaw, who's responsible for a number of their major discoveries, including the Juan Scipio deposit. Um, but where it came about was a number of Mag's largest shareholders back in 2008 approached Peter about putting together a Mag Gold, sort of in quotations, with the same strategy as Mag Silver of building a portfolio of district scale projects and then sort of exploring them one after the next but focusing on new discoveries, you know, not drilling um, brownfields project, recycling projects, residual mineralization. It had to be big, it had to be new, it had to be high grade. And so we focused on the gold side, we changed the name, took it public, we changed it to Menorum Gold. Um, but as of lately here, we started to focus a bit more on silver based on a uh, silver project. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, I was down there at the beginning of this month to go see your Alamos project. And the Alamos project, um, you know, it's big. It's, uh, what, 20,000 hectares, basically. Um, and then right. there's a lot of old historical workings on it. A lot of uh, silver, uh, you know, epithermal stuff, lead zinc, right? Correct. It's, it's a very polymetallic uh, district. The, the key thing for us was this is a historic district that had 200 million ounces of silver mined out of it. They were high grade ounces, we're talking multi kilos per ton with three, four percent copper, base metal kickers. As you saw personally, there's multiple old copper smelters on site. You know, th this was a project that was a big historical producer, but was missed in the entire large sort of land rush that we had in New Mexico over the last about 15 years or so where you had a lot of the silver miners going to Mexico. And, and the reason for that was, as I sort of described to you down at the project, this thing looked like a patchwork quilt until about six, seven years ago when a, a family who you met spent a couple million dollars US, about five years of their time consolidating this package for the first time in its history. And then we were the, the, the lucky recipients to get this project from that family and basically put it into the, the condition where it is today and the state where it is today. Now that family really knows what they're doing, right? Because they're Mexican locals. Uh, they're able, they're trusted in the community. They're able to negotiate. Um, they're true to their word. And then, you know, they've been um, successful. They found the Santa Elena district down there, right? For Silvercrest. Correct. And, and they, that one wasn't so much of a, a consolidation process as Alamos was, but still they, they did a lot of the grunt work, put that together, eventually optioned it to Silvercrest and ultimately first Majestic acquired it. What um, uh, there's a track record. What what did you have to go by when you first? Uh, what interested you uh, initially when you first optioned the project? Just the old historical workings and the the high grade. Yeah, you know, uh, it was really. I, I have a background in silver. I was sort of a, one of the the longtime co-founders behind Impact Silver. I spent a lot of time in Mexico, and one of the, the key things we were looking for was wide high grades because in Mexico you often find these you know, 50 centimeter wide veins running a kilo per ton silver, which is excellent grade, but by the time you dilute it to three meters to get mining machinery in there, you know, it's it's like the old adage has always been, um, tons cost grade pays. So what you want is you want wide, high grade, and this was one of those rare districts that had both of those criteria met. It was wide, it was high grade, and it also had seen no modern exploration. There was no historical drilling. Nobody had ever done a modern exploration program over the entire project. So for us, is we went in on the basis that, okay, we know there's a big historical vein. It had three big mines on it, but there's just nothing has been done in the entire regional area there. And that's what we wanted to change. We wanted it to utilize our deals like Peter McGaw and David Jones of uh, Rare Gold Bell fame and look for new things in this district. Now you had an interesting strategy, right? You've been through phase one of drilling throughout 2017, 2018. A lot of these old historic veins run north-south. Um, so you figured, um, you know, you drill east-west uh, at a shallow angle in order to try to intercept as many um, undiscovered veins as possible? Correct. So what we discovered pretty quickly on, and this is in our presentation, we had um, 
you know, the original large vein, and we decided, okay, let's focus our efforts on finding new veins. And really quickly, we started discovering new veins. And as of today, we're up to about 15 new veins. And uh, by new veins, I call it, they're actually vein systems. They're clusters of veins, stacked veins. Um, they're big, robust systems. So we mapped these 15, and we said, okay, now why haven't these 15 seen historical production? And Peter McGaw and Steve Maynard, who you met, came up with this theory uh, we call the piano key model is basically a system of horses and grobbins and what that means is simply you had some areas that were down dropped some areas that were thrust up and in the thrust up areas the veins are exposed really high up uh, really sort of right in the middle of the part of the system so the high grade was right on surface that's why the spaniards mined it that's why europeans mined it but on these neighboring veins they were down dropped so what you see on surface is the highest level expression of the vein. So you, you can find high grade, but it's sort of spotty. The vein is not very continuous. And what we decided was this is our strategy. Let's test this as you refer to with shallow angle holes, which are still deep holes. They're just, um, you know, for lack of a better word, they're sort of that kind of an angle as opposed to that kind of an angle. So when you drill in that direction, you can intersect as many veins as possible in these down drop blocks. And that's where, at basically, this time last year, we had proof of concept. And we drilled right into uh, one of our holes had probably five wine veins in it. It hit two larger veins, one eight, uh, eight meters of 1,700 gram silver with a bunch of base metals. One was a meter and a half of 550 gram silver. For instance, the eight meter wide vein on surface was a meter wide running about 200 grams. And at a depth of 300 meters, you're in a big bonanza zone, eight meters high, high grades, similar grades to what we saw the historical vein had produced. So what we've done is, is we mapped all these veins, we continue to add new veins. The idea here is, is to drill a hole or two in each of these new veins and basically try to prove that each of these new veins has the same kind of mineralized potential as what the historic vein had. But these ones were not mined because they weren't exposed high, you know, low enough in the system and a high grade wasn't on surface the way it was in a historic vein. Did you find those wide widths and high grades in your first drill hole like Mag did? Uh, no, it was hole seven. Okay. Uh, mind you, holes four and five, we did intersect some good mineralization too. Um, just to give you an idea, for instance, hole eight, uh, was hole seven. We just had the eight meters of 1,700 grams. That's about a kilometer and a half west of the historical vein that had the 200 million taken out of it. Uh, the meter and a half of 500 grams is sort of right in between that kilometer and a half, uh, right between the two veins. It's a separate vein again. Um, we drilled uh, about two kilometers southeast of that area in holes four and five of our original drill program. And we hit in uh, hole four, we hit um, uh, about 20 meters true width uh, using a silver equivalent number, about 700 gram silver equivalent over 200 meters. It's polymetallic coal, unlike the, the silver hole we had in seven but it, it gives you an idea about the scale of mineralization and these are you know this is not just stepping out this is stepping out on the completely new veins kilometers apart and that's our strategy here is to quantify the expiration potential build an inventory of new veins and then come back and prioritize and figure out which ones you want to drill off so yeah that's the major problem for you guys you guys um, have so many interesting things to explore that it's a matter of prioritizing targets um, you guys, have, you've been doing some rock chipping, some surface sampling, right? And you've been able to discover the Alessandra, which is uh, gold copper. You got very high gold grades there, right? Right. Yeah, we, we sampled over 100 grams. And as you recall, down when we were on the project, uh, the, the prospectors brought in a bunch of uh, rocks that were almost, in some areas, up to a kilometer away from that area of high grade with visible gold in it. We don't have those assays back yet. But it's, it, you know, it was... A, a, from what I recollect, up to three to four percent copper as well. So it was a, a high grade area. Um, what that means for the ultimate story, we don't know, but we, we're permitting pads there. We want to get a hole or two into that uh, early in the new year. Your Quintero, so you started a new drill program uh, for 2018, 2019 already, right? Correct. So we, we resumed drilling in August. Basically, what we did is after the discovery hole in December of last year, we announced it in January, and then we took a bit of a hiatus from drilling for about seven months, and we just did, as I call it, housekeeping. And that involved taking the project from 4,500 hectares up to, uh, as you mentioned, 20,000 hectares, 
it involved basically making sure that all our I's are dotted, T's are crossed on surface agreements, agreements with the local communities, which we have long-term agreements with them, five-year agreements, renewable for up to 10 years, covering everything from exploration to exploitation. So the idea was get that all in place, acquire all these critical claims that we didn't own in the area, and then we resumed drilling um, right at the beginning of September. And uh, one thing that uh, you noted and uh, we'll be mentioning here very shortly is that we are we did mobilize a second drill rig with the intention uh, of just speeding up our results and speeding up our process of building this inventory of veins as we go through testing these new ones. Now, you're using a different strategy than you did in your first uh, drill program. The, now that you have targets identified, you're going to be drilling uh, the southern area of the Quintero vein. Is that correct? Yeah, we, we will be drilling. Um, uh, for instance, it's it, one of the numerous new veins we discovered, we, we basically believe, is the southern extension of the Promontorio Quintero vein. We call it the uh, Promontorio Sur vein. Um, that vein, we believe, is the extension of the historical vein because the host rock is pretty unique to that vein, and we see that offset here. Also, we see evidence of the mineralization that was mined at Promontorio, and Promontorio was probably in the 40 million ounce range was taken out of there, um, maybe possibly more based on historical records. That vein was cut off in mineralization, and it looks like it has been offset. The offset portion has never been explored, has never been drilled, and that's something we'll be putting a couple of peoples into uh, sometime in the, the first half of next year. Is that one of the down keys? Is that why it's never been um, developed? Yes. Yeah, it appears to be. It appears to be. Because on surface, um, to give you an example, Promontory, we discussed this hole was 20 meters that we hit a 700 gram silver equivalent. That was at a vertical depth of about 50 meters. On surface, the vein is about a meter and a half wide. So it blows out and becomes quite a robust system relatively close to surface. On the extension, as we call it, the Promontory of Sur, what we see there is, is the mineralization appears to be extremely high up in the vein system, the Buchanan model, which we have in our presentation. It seems to be very high up. You're, you see these sort of isolated pods of high grade, these stringy veins. Um, but it's that host rock that helped us identify this as basically a, a, a cutoff portion of the historical vein. But it appears to be pretty high up. And the idea would be to drill test that's probably at a depth of 350 to 400 meters down and see if you can't nail the sweet spot there. Okay, excellent. And then you're gonna drill Alessandra as well? Um, Alessandra, um, you know, the priorities right now is is we're, we're putting some holes into San Jose right now, which is a thing that's uh, announced a couple of, uh, uh, couple of uh, probably about a month ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be putting a few holes in that vein. Um, we are drilling in the Eastern areas at Amalia, Tigre, Anna veins. Um, we will be doing Promontorio Sur. We have a, a massive breccia uh, system as well that we'll be putting a hole into. The idea here is, is right now we're still discovering veins faster than we can drill them, but the idea is over the first half of next year to catch up to that and get them sort of running neck to neck and getting these things tested as fast as possible so that we can then you know, build that build that list of you know our top targets and go back to them. Again. Okay, the market really liked your results over the last year. You know, it was a tough year for many mining stocks, and uh, Menorm is one of the top, uh, basically in the silver industry, uh, one of the top performers. Silver two thousand eighteen. It's done well. Yeah, correct. You know, it's it's what it really is. Is in Mexico, it's everybody's looking for high grade new silver, and you just are not finding much. Um, of course, you know, one of the companies you cover, Silvercrest, has had a lot of success with high-grade silver. And, um, you know, the investors aren't just looking for it, but the industry is looking for it. Mm -hmm. And we um, sort of got the tempest in the teapot there and that we checked off a bunch of the criteria that both investors and the industry is looking for. And we've then taken this extremely aggressive exploration approach to quantifying the potential size of this before drilling off a resource. And the markets reacted well for it. Right. Good. Um, that sounds good. I appreciate the update and good luck in 2019. Excellent. Thank you, Garrett. Gold Stock Analyst has been providing independent precious metal research since 1996. We offer three publications, GSA Pro, GSA Top 10, and GSA Silver. For more information, please visit us at our website, www.goldstockanalyst.com.